So I've just arrived at camp and I think this is the perfect little spot to set up my new tent. It's quite muddy and I think it's going to rain again. The sky is looking a little bit dark over there. So yeah, I'm going to get on with getting the kit out and then I'll go through what I'm, uh, what I'm setting up today. It's the beginning of October and it's actually really mild. I'm too warm today. It's about 21 degrees at the moment, but it does look like it's gonna rain. So I'm here to set up a brand new tent and uh, test out something a bit different. So let's get cracking. So today I'm going to be camping in a Pomoli Dome X4 2.0 tent. And this one's a little bit special. So I'm gonna get the outer tent put up first it has got a fireproof ground sheet as well and an inner but because it looks like it might rain any time I'm going to get the outer up first so I've never even opened this up yet so this is going to be quite interesting so it comes with guy lines it's got six poles they're all the same length I believe and we've got tent pegs and we've got some clips and here's the outer Okay, right, so let's start with the poles. The Pomoli Dome X4 is a freestanding dome-shaped tent designed for winter camping. It's a convenient and solid shaped tent for two people with a wood stove, but you can actually fit up to four people in it. There are six tent poles all the same length, three entry exit points and six snow skirts. Dyneema fabric has been added to the crossing pole to add extra strength. All seams are treated with waterproof taping to ensure no leaks from rain or snow. The outer tent is equipped with three controllable triangular vents which can improve ventilation inside the tent. The outer tent fabric is made from 40D ripstop Cinelon PU 3000mm. The waterproof treatment is heat taped waterproof seaming. The inner tent fabric is also mesh and 40D ripstop Cinelon PU 3000mm. The tent poles are aluminium alloy and the ground sheet is 210D Oxford Flame Retardant Fabric. The tent area stretches 8 square metres and the inner tent is 3 square metres. The tent height is 5 foot 4 and it weighs 6.4 kilos. This tent is classed as a four season tent and I'll be testing this out later in the year in all weathers. Just bear in mind if you are going to buy this tent that the ground sheet and the inner tent are additional extras. <laughs> that is the main dome outer setup. I'm now going to just rotate it and manoeuvre it back into the position I wanted after the wind took it like a kite. Um, I want to have it so there's a certain way it needs to go. So I'm just going to rearrange the uh, tent and then I'm going to peg it down quick before the wind takes off again. So it comes with these huge tent pegs that are like arrows. Um, so I'm going to go around and just pin the outer down um, and see if it needs any adjustments.
have a special footprint or ground sheet and it's special because it's got a fireproof part to it. So I'm going to lay this out and I'm going to try and get this, keep this as dry as possible. I don't want to get it dirty. So which way up does it go? So it's got these little clips and they clip into the corners of the tent. I'm going to start with the back first. Now I'm going to just leave this ground sheet bit open at the moment because I don't want to get the inside dirty. If I can keep it clean, then great. But I've got the inner tent now and this will go over half of the tent. So I'm going to clip this on now. See if I can clip this on without getting the inside muddy. Okay, well, the inner's up. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's right. But yeah, that's a pretty decent space actually. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it zipped up because already there's loads of woodland creatures in here, shall we say? Ugh. So. I'm going to start just bringing in the bedroom stuff in first and then I can get that all zipped in there and then we're going to set up the living space. So today I'm not using my Rab 800. I've got my Ulpro Hush sleeping bag which I absolutely love. I've always got one in the car because you never know when you need one and it's so soft. Um, I've had it for a couple of years now. I've got one in the house and one in the car and I absolutely love it. So today I'm going to use that. I don't think I'll be needing a down sleeping bag, so I'll be quite happy with that one. Right, okay, time to get the rest of it in. So let me just show you the outside of the tent. I've just added the guy lines to it just to, I don't think I'll need them because I don't think it's going to be that windy, but I've added a couple anyway. But these air vents are really cool. They've got little sticks here that Velcro and, and hold the vents out because we're going to need good ventilation tonight. As you can see, there's the branding, pommelie, and it's got this snow skirt here as well for bad weather. So as you can see, the poles interlink and link up together. There's three doors to this tent, one, two, and three, one at the front as well. And again, you can see that the vent is sticking out because it's got a little like pokey thing holding it out. Um, so yeah, it seems, really sturdy. I love the colour. I absolutely love the design of this tent as well. So we are colour coordinated tonight because I'm wearing my brown revolution race trousers as well. So I'm just getting stuff inside the tent. I've now got the ground sheet set up so I'm going to in a moment just, just set up and then I'm going to show you what I've got in store for this evening. This is what it's all about this weekend. This is by Pomoli and it is a baker stove so it's a wood burner stove in the top and it's an oven in the bottom it's even got a little thermostat there and apparently it goes from 200 to 260 degrees celsius which is about 400 to 500 fahrenheit and you put the wood in here and the heat goes down below and you can cook all sorts of foods in here and you keep nice and warm so this bit here lifts up i'll show you in a bit and apparently you can have more wood in there and you can have like an open flame there if you want to cook on or you can cover it up and put your pots and pans on there it's got a chimney and they've also sent me 
this hot water tank and that somehow fits on the chimney. I've never had a go at it before. I'm not quite sure how to do it. Um, and then it's got this little tap so you can get instant hot water. So I'm very excited to try all this out and I'm going to see if I can have a go at assembling it for you. See, these little legs at the bottom, they fold out. And in here, I've got bits of, bits of chimney um, that I need to, I need to assemble. It's also got a little pull out tray, look. You put your food on there. And then in this one, I've got to get more pieces of chimney out. So this is how it's, this is apparently how it's stored. There's some different pieces of chimney as well. Let's take these bits out. And then in the side here, there's a little ash drawer and inside it is some spare screws and bits. But also it's got a little stick thing that you use to, well, open doors and stuff because it's hot. I'm going to take those out now because no doubt I will forget. And they lock, that locks down like that. So yeah, pretty cool, huh? Here she is. Look, there's the water tank. And then the chimney goes through the roof. <laughs> so cool, isn't it? So you can see, I've just roughly cut a hole in. I just did a cross. I've tied this little bit back and the chimney goes all the way up there. There we go. I've just been setting up the bedroom. As you can see, I've got the Trekology UL80 mattress with my All Pro Hush sleeping bag. Got my pyjamas and cosy bits there. I've got my Flextel little light there, my Trekology pillow, and dronies there with all my bits and pieces, um, my bag for the morning. This is big enough for two people. There's loads of room in here. Um, and as you can see, there's a door there. And there's a door this side as well, which leads to the outer doors. I've got the fairy lights up. Very cosy. And this is really handy as well. The tent itself is five foot four high, which is the same height as me, funnily enough. Um, but you've got this little storage netting there, so you can dry bits out because the fire will obviously keep things warm. But I'm going to put my keys and my purse up there at the moment. I'm also hanging the controls to the lights up there as well. So, it's almost time to set up the stove and I'm very excited and also a bit nervous because I've never done it before. Um, it's not very cold tonight but I'm still going to do it because I'm going to be using the oven to cook with and I want to test all the gear out. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got a little confession. I'm in my haste to come here today, I picked up what I thought was a sack of wood blocks. I've got kindling, I've got fire lighters, and I thought I picked up a bag of wood blocks to burn. But I've actually bought charcoal. I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, bit of a fail there, but never mind. I've got my little bits of wood. And these little bits of wood, they're going to go in here. I'm not sure of the exact configuration I'm going for, but um, anything just to get a bit of airflow. Do we think that's enough wood? There's a few bits of firelight in there as well. Um, I have no idea. We'll give it a go. We'll uh, we'll light it and see. Oh. This out of the way. I don't want to set fire to my. I don't want to set fire to my picnic blanket, do we? Why am I using that end? Okay. So it's got little vents here as well. I think. Not sure how you. All right, okay, like that. So you can close it up and let more air in. So I've added coal. Um, it's smoking quite a lot. This is very exciting. It 
it's still burning. <laughs> there is definitely a little bit of heat coming out the front there and definitely some on the top so it's definitely something I can do some cooking on the top there. Um, the oven, it doesn't seem to be getting that warm yet. Uh, I'm not sure how quick it's going to be but so I've just put some more coal in and it is now toasty warm. Um, the flames started really licking up so I've just closed the little door thing. The oven's now warming up and I can hear the water boiling. So um, I'm going to start getting bits and pieces ready to cook dinner I think. Still a bit terrified of getting burnt alive. I've already scalded my finger once. Stupidly I touched the metal thing with my finger. Okay I'm gonna just a hot, it's a little bit warm. Oh, look at that. Look at that, boiling. <laughs> okay. Ow, it's a bit hot. Okay, I think I've got enough there to make a pot of tea. So I'm gonna put that on there. Okay, that shows how hot that is because it's already fizzing. Christ. It's going dark. I've got my fly screen closed now to keep the nasty bugs out. And I've got my fairy lights up. So I've got my fire going. So now is the time to go in my magic box of new toys. And somewhere in the bottom here is another new toy. So this is from Silver Ant and it's a travel tea set and it's so so cute let me show you I've never used it before but now I've got some boiling water I'm going to make some tea and I'm also going to change these lights because they're a bit like it's like a disco in here she's not the ambiance that I wanted wait is that better that's better oh it's really warm up there it's lovely so yes let me show you this before it gets completely dark in here so you get a cloth to keep it clean and inside you've got a teapot and a little pot to put all the loose tea in and three little cups so it's ideal for when my parents come to visit but look how cute this teapot is let me show you look isn't it cute and inside it's got like a little filter so you can put the uh, loose tea in there I am tonight going to be having proper herbal tea. Um, so I might make one of these now, as soon as we've got the boiling water. And I'm gonna enjoy a cup of tea um, with my fire um, while I wait for the oven to get ready to put my garlic bread in. And then I'm gonna have my steak and it's just gonna be oh so lovely. So yeah, really, really cozy in here at the moment. Lovely and warm, a little bit too warm. So I'm just gonna tidy up the mess I've just made behind me. And then we're gonna make some cup of tea. So I know you can't really see much, but here it goes. Can't actually see. It's so dark in here. Oh, it smells quite nice actually. I'm not normally one for herbal, I'm gonna lie. Um, I'm just gonna put that on there. Whoa, no, I'm not gonna put that on there. <laughs> Everything's so boiling hot. Okay. What I need to do is get my heat proof chopping board. That's what I need to do. Right, I'm gonna just pop it up. Where am I gonna put it? I need to put it somewhere where I can bloody, <laughs> so I can see. Put it there, I'll put it there for now. Right, get one of my little pots and pour in the tea. Wow, it's boiling. That smells really nice, actually. I've no idea. What flavour it is, it's too dark to see. I don't know why I've got my spoon. Well, I was gonna. Okay, I can't touch the lid because it's so hot. I'm burning my fingers, that's for sure. Definitely burning my fingers tonight. So I've got some nice garlic bread. So yeah, that's definitely warming up. So I'm gonna put that in there. And see what happens. Open the vents. Ouch, burnt my finger again. So that's the fourth time I've burnt my finger now. Um, let's try some tea. 
So I've got a tiny cup of tea. Cheers everybody, or whatever you say when you're drinking herbal tea. Hope I don't scold myself. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't really taste of anything, but maybe, maybe I didn't let it brew. It's like hot flavored water. Is that what this herbal tea stuff's supposed to be like? I mean, it's quite nice. I can drink it. And seeing as I'm headachey and dehydrated lately, um, this will probably do me the world of good. So, question is, do I need to put more on there, or shall I just leave it? I'm not sure what I'm doing. It's all good fun, isn't it, when you're learning? Um, I'm gonna. Oh dear! Oh, it's all gone wrong. I'm going to pour myself because that is the size of the cup. It's like a thimble or an egg cup, and the teapot it holds. Oh, I just spilled it on myself. Oh my god. Oh, good job it's not that hot. Okay, I need to watch what I'm doing. That's better. Okay, it's alright. It's not scalding. I didn't burn myself. Here we are. Cheers, everybody. I mean, it's nice. Um, it's nice. Okay, so the bread is in. How long do we think it's going to take to cook? No idea. In the meantime, I think I'm going to get the steak going. I've also just moved my boots under the back of the oven as well to dry them out. So we're back with the silver ant frying pan. Again, I'm just going to turn the handle round. It doesn't sit like that. And that is going to cook really quickly because it's titanium. The heat is going to blast through there really quickly. Okay, oil, pop that, pop that on, pop that on there, steak anybody? Okay, let's see, now this is where it could all go terribly wrong, oh wow, Ooh. so the way I keep my stuff cool is I use a coal box, it's a fabric one, um, but I have a frozen two litre bottle of water in it, but I wrap that in a tea towel and that keeps the water nice and cold for a good couple of days normally. Um, so all my stuff's in there keeping cool. Yes, it is by the fire, probably not the best idea, but I can't be bothered to open the door to put it outside and keep getting it in again. Um, so that's where all my foodie bits are. You know what? Things look like they are cooking really well. Let's have a little look. Get in there, get in there. Steak, a little look. Nice, nice, nice. So this is my third cup of tea, and yes, it is tiny, but oh so cute and actually quite practical. It works really well. The tea's lovely for starters and it's brewed perfectly. While oh, my steak is cooking, the garlic bread is coming, sweet corn's toasting away nicely and it's lovely and warm. So I'm really enjoying this actually and I can't wait to do more winter hikes now. I mean, to be fair, it's not actually cold today. So this literally is just a practice run, but it's a success. Apart from, I mean, the muddy floor, would have been a disaster but luckily because I've got this extra uh, waterproof um, sheet in the car, this pa picnic blanket should I say, um, I'm able to sit on the floor quite comfortably and not feel like I'm getting wet or anything. Um, there's loads of room in this tent, I love it, absolutely love it. So this is definitely the way forward for me so I can carry on doing my hiking uh, in all weathers, even if I get wet I don't care because I can come in here and get warm and dry. And, uh, and cook my dinner like this, so it's amazing. Really recommend it. So as I say, this tent is the Dome X4 2.0. The stove is the Baker stove. Um, I'll put all the details in the description below because I can't actually remember the full name of it. Um, this tea set is a travel tea set from Silver Ant. I don't get any commission for it. They sent it me to try and I said I'd review it and actually, you know what, I think it's pretty cool. So, 
I'll be taking it with me on my adventures for my evening cups of tea. Okay, so as you can see the temperature is now 300 degrees and it looks like things are cooking nicely if not already done. Can you see? It's hard to see. Sorry, apologies about the lighting. It's so dark now. I have got, um, I have got a chair that I can sit on, but actually I'm quite enjoying just sitting on the floor by the fire, so I'm not going to be using that. So I've got my plate. I'm going to have a look at the uh, the bread situation first. Bread certainly, certainly looks good. Sweet corn. I'm not sure really how that's going to cook, but. Again, it was just a, an experiment, really. Right, so there we are, some cheesy, cheesy garlic bread. Mm. I'm gonna rescue the steak. There we go. Oh, I've lost my fault, there it is. Okay, let's try steak. I love steak. It's just a bit steamy in here. But the door is open, so I'm hoping we have enough ventilation. Oh, I am completely stuffed. So I think now is the time to make a nice hot chocolate. It's, what time is it? Let's have a look. It's 10 to 8, that's all it is. Um, the water's still steaming away and I think that's what's obviously causing the steam in here. Uh, it's not, there's no condensation or anything, obviously because of the heat. I think the coals were actually a good choice because they're they're glowing and they're they're burning and they're probably going to kick out a lot more heat than the wood actually. So if you look at the moment, that's what we're dealing with. So actually, I'm quite pleased that I did use coal. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to get a little bit tidied up and then I'm going to make a hot chocolate and sit in my chair and just gonna listen to some music, I think, and um, chill out for a bit. This is definitely what I needed. It's been a very hectic seven days at work, and uh, it's just nice to come here and do something a bit different. This week I actually went on a, a mental health awareness course, and one of the things the ladies said to us was how important it is to get away and do something different um, and do some active rest. Um, so passive resting is when you're literally like watching TV or playing the Xbox or something and you're completely distracted and everything just sort of goes over your head. But active rest is something like this where you're actually coming out and doing something different um, and it does actually relax you more um, because you're doing something and you're getting some quality time. And this is why I come away um, I've done seven days straight and by the sixth and seventh day I do feel like I'm in a prison, I can't wait to get out, I'm sick of talking to people and I'm just fed up of work. So today I had to get away and reset and this is the perfect way. Tomorrow I'm looking at going on a, a little ramble somewhere. Uh, I am just off the Peak District, I'm down south in Staffordshire, so the south end of the Peak District. So I could go into the Peak District but there are a couple of places that I'm looking at going to see. Um, depending on what time I leave here, there's no rush for me to leave here in the morning. So I'm going to get up and have some breakfast and just chill out for a bit. Obviously it's going to take me some time to pack this tent away tomorrow, especially because it being muddy under the ground sheet. So I want to try and get it packed away as clean as possible. Um, and then I'm going to set off and go and visit somewhere. But yeah, this is a perfect way to reset after a busy week at work. So I'm, I'm pleased I came. And thank you to Pomalee for the tent. The, uh, the stove oven thing and the water tank, it's amazing, uh, absolutely amazing. I love this tent, it's the perfect size for two or three people um, and it's a good winter tent. Uh, there is no vestibule so if it rains you'd have to have your door shut 
um, and I'm not obviously going to be getting to test that tonight because there's not going to be much rain I don't think, I don't think there's going to be any rain but it's so big in here and cosy that I wouldn't actually mind having the door shut so obviously you've just got to make sure you've got the right amount of ventilation if you're going to have the stove um, but yeah, all good, really pleased and that's enough, don't want it to be stir it in. This water tank is so good. I'm going to put a little bit more in. Such a good idea, isn't it? There we go. Clever, clever idea. I'm so impressed with all this kit. Can't wait to go back to Wales now in the winter, do some hiking and come back all damp and cold and get the fire going this is amazing this one's great I, I do like this this is so cute um, maybe if I put it if I put it up there <laughs> it's rolling around oh it won't stay if I um worried about hanging it there but maybe if I hang it I could probably hang it there Ooh. Got a little ring. We just hang it, hang it on there like that. There we go. That's better. Now I can see a bit better actually. We should have thought of that earlier. But I am going to have an early night because the last few nights I've stayed up quite late. I've been on late shifts at work, and uh, but I have been getting up early as well. So um, I feel like I, I need to get some extra rest. I'm just going to get cosy now and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening and I'll probably come back to you when it's bedtime so we can test out the bedroom together and see how cosy it is in there and then I'm going to say goodnight and I'll be back again tomorrow for some more adventuring. Hi people, so it's just coming up to 10 o'clock. The fire gone out a while ago but the metal is still scalding hot. I've managed to burn another finger. <clears throat> um, I've been drinking lots of tea, just keep putting it back on the top of the stove and it just it warms it up, it keeps it nice and warm, it's amazing. So I've had that much tea, I'm probably going to be up all night now, but um, I needed to rehydrate to be fair. But I've come into the little bedroom now and as you can see I've moved my little flexi tail bulb in here and I've just got my torch on my phone at the moment just to give me um, a bit more light. Um, this inner tent is pitch black so it's great and um, the floor does feel a little bit damp because um, obviously the ground sheet is sat on wet wet muddy grass so um, it might be a little bit damp in the morning but I've got my jackery here it's charging up my phone and my uh, camera battery from today I've got my warm snuggly clothes here and uh, little drone tested him out today he He's a bit glitchy, but he did work, and I'm hoping um, I'll have some uh, good good bits of video to, to add to this video, so we shall see about that. Um, but yeah, um, it's been a really nice evening, actually. Um, I'm just ready for bed now. I'm just going get, to get ready for bed and um, have some good sleep. Obviously, I won't be using the stove in the morning, because A, it's not really cold enough, but B, it will take ages to to cool down to be able to pack it away I guess so I won't be surprised if it was still hot in the morning because it's absolutely scalding still so that's um, that's food for thought isn't it and I'm now tired so I'm gonna go to bed and I shall see you guys in the morning bye Morning campers. Oh. Mm. Mm. Not the best night's sleep. Nothing to do with the tent, but I've got a really bad sore throat, which kept making me cough all night. Um, anyway, 
it's about eight o'clock. I just put all my clothes inside the bed to get them warm. So I'm just warming them up. And then I'm going to get up and get some breakfast. Mm. Very cosy in here though. So last night I used the Jackery to charge my phone and also my camera batteries and that's just really helpful. It's still got 67%, it was only on 80 anyway, so it's not used a lot, but that's just helpful to keep everything charged up. So today I think I'm going to have some breakfast first and try and pack down everything and try and keep it as clean as possible. And then I'm thinking of heading over to Derby to Cork Abbey today, um, having a look around there. There is a place on the way that I might have a look at as well, depending on how long I've got. Um, but yeah, so time to have a look out there and see what carnage there is from what I left last night. Um, but yeah, tent's lovely and dry. It did rain overnight, but... There's loads of room in here, it's a really nice inner tent, so really pleased. Um, but yeah, time to, time to get the kettle on I think. Guys, I just wanted to pop on here now on home and just go through a few finer points about this tent and the baker stove. First of all, I'm really, really impressed with this tent from the design and colour to how it functions and all the bits and pieces on it. I can't fault the tent at all. Um, but there are some things to consider if you are thinking about getting a hot tent for the first time using one. Obviously, in the video you've just watched, that was my first attempt at hot temp camping with not a great deal of preparation. Um, I just wanted to be authentic and just set it up like a complete beginner and just have a go. But obviously that had a few little downfalls and a very steep learning curve. So I just wanted to go over a few things with you about that. What, darling? Oh. Okay, so a little tiger lily's going to join me on this one by the sounds of it. So, first of all, one thing that was a massive oversight for me was I didn't take any fireproof gloves with me, no gauntlets, no hand protection whatsoever. And I think I came home with at least two blisters on my fingers um, and I burnt my hand a little bit as well. It was literally just from tapping the side of the stove with my finger by accident when I was picking the cup up. So without any fire resistant gloves on my hands, I did manage to come away with some very painful moments, shall we say, when I accidentally touched the metal. Everything is metal on that stove, everything. So it occurred to me once I got there that I didn't have anything apart from the metal stick that I had to open and close things with, but just accidentally touching the side of the oven with my finger, I, I got a really bad burn. So um, yeah, I've now ordered some fire resistant gloves to use for future, and I'm gonna get some proper tongs to use as well, and make sure that I have a board to use to put things on. Um, all that completely, didn't even occur to me. I didn't even give it any thought, to be quite honest. The next thing that was, well, it could have been a fail, but I don't think it was, was the fact that I brought coal with me instead of uh, wood. So obviously I had the wood kindling and the fire lighters to start it off with and everything was fine. And I did use coal. Um, and 
I thought that was going to be a mistake, but actually it worked absolutely fine. So that that that's something that you could consider if you prefer coal to wood, then I think it works absolutely fine. The other thing that um, I forgot to take with me um, was a carbon monoxide alarm. I do have one in the house for my gas fire, um, but it never occurred to me at the time to take one. Um, now. I had good ventilation on that tent and if I had operated it correctly I definitely would have had good ventilation. The front door I kept open, I had the fly screen closed but uh, most of the night it was all open and then I just closed over that the fly screen later on. Um, but also as I pointed out in the video there are vents that you can prop open round the side and the back of the tent which I did. What I didn't realise was that on the inside it was sealed still so I should have actually unzipped the inside as well so it didn't seem like much of a problem during the evening but when I went to bed um, when I got into the inner tent which is completely sealed it's got three doors it's got the vent the mesh top on it I felt like I couldn't breathe like I literally got a blocked nose my throat became so scratchy that I was coughing all night and I actually woke up in the early hours um, not being able to breathe through my nose and I don't know whether it is co coincidence or whether it was because of having the hot stove going most of the night um, but I obviously thought it was okay because I had my vents open and then in the morning I realised that I hadn't opened them from the inside so that was a massive fail um, so I did have a bit of a panic uh, and that's the first time I felt like that in a tent but because it was so dark and the inner tent was black um, I couldn't breathe through my nose, um, it wasn't a very pleasant experience. Now, as I say, I don't know whether that's got anything to do with the actual stove itself, but I would have felt better having an alarm with me. Uh, at one point I did feel a bit paranoid about going to sleep in case I didn't wake up, and that is a serious note, I did actually feel that. So going forwards, I now know to ventilate it properly by opening the flaps on the outside, but also unzipping them on the inside, and taking a carbon monoxide uh, alarm as well. Now, the inner tent had no condensation whatsoever in the morning. It did rain a little bit lightly overnight, um, but the outer tent was wet on the inside and I'm not sure if it was leaking from the rain. I think it was condensation though, because again, I hadn't opened up the vents. I think it was well sealed and it was really wet on the on the roof so that is something I need to test again um, I am going to go away at the end of this month for a multi-night trip and I will be using this tent and stove again so I will be putting it to the test and you can guarantee at the end of October we are going to get some bad weather but that's what I'm going for I'm going to test it out um, and see how it holds up and lastly, I just wanted to say a big thank you to David Allen for your super thanks donation. Thank you so much. Welcome aboard to all my new subscribers and thank you to everyone who's continued to support my adventures. All the gear that I used in this video will be in the description below. There are links to the products that I've used if you want to take a closer look and there might even be some discount codes for you. Keep watching for more adventures with me and Tiger Lily. You never know, she might come with me one day. Um, but for now, I just want to say thank you for watching today's video and I shall see you soon!